Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Doctors of Running Virtual Roundtable, where we three, well, typically three, but today two, Doctors of Physical Therapy discuss the art and the science to the stuff that we're putting on our feet. But today, we are so thankful to be welcoming Phil Anthony from 361 USA. Uh, he is here representing their uh, brand, and he's going to give us a lot of insight into what they've been up to this year, how they navigated 2020, and what things are looking for in the future. So thanks so much for joining us, Phil. Hey, thanks for uh, having me. I'm excited yeah. to, to chat about uh, running. It's always fun. Yeah. You guys tell me when well, to shut up, because I'll, I'll start <laughs> rambling. No, the rambling is good. That's why we're we here. We usually like rambling. All right. But let's, yeah, speaking of running, how did you get into the sport? Um, kind of, do you have a favorite running memory? We like to ask people that um, first. Yeah, you know, it, 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 it's, it's certainly a long story. Um, as far as my running career, I, I, it goes way back to, to when I was a kid, and my parents were both um, runners from the initial running boom of the 70s. You know, it, it's, oh. it, it was always kind of in my household. My dad was an avid runner. My mom was actually a power walker. Um, so we were always doing that. There was always a pair of, of running shoes in my closet. Um, you know, I actually got my first pair of running shoes at, at Snail's Pace back in, you know, when they were at one store over in Fountain Valley and my brother worked at the yogurt stop down the street. But uh, um, so I, I, I've been in run, especially in that world for a long, long time. Even though running really wasn't my primary sport, um, we always did it, you know. So I was actually a, a beach kid growing up and, and was playing and surfing and playing volleyball. So volleyball became kind of my first sport and, uh, I was running, of course, to stay fit for that, but uh, it was kind of my primary gig, and I was playing at a pretty high level early on, and um, I actually went to college at UC Irvine to play volleyball, so that was my thing. Um, like I said, we were running through that whole period, but it really wasn't my focus. I was never doing it at a super high level then, um, and funny story is it, it, what, it, what it really kind of took off for me was a couple years after college, and we were sitting with a buddy of mine. Um, on my patio and I look out over to the Santa Ana river trails and I, and I actually still live right around there. So I, I have that viewpoint on the mm -hmm. river trail right by Fairview park and, and Talbot for I know Matt, you know, where this area is. Um, and we were watching runners go by and then all of a sudden his girlfriend took off to go running. And, and I said, what's Shelly doing? That's it's his wife now actually. But he said, Oh, she's training for the LA marathon. And I said, Oh my God, that's nuts. You know, that's crazy. Why is she doing that? And, and he's, you know, we, we talked about it for a little bit and then he, you know, we kind of got into it and I said, you know, as being a guy, I drink a couple of beers. It was like, oh, we can do that. You know, let's do that. And we actually put it together. And, and I ran that first marathon. It was in 1999, I think. Uh -huh. um, and it took off for me there, you know. Um, and it, it wasn't a great time. I think it was a four hour or something like that. But um, but I ended up running, I think, five marathons that year. And, and I really got the bug oh. then. And continued wow. down that path for quite some time into the early 2000s. <laughs> um, as it was really being an avid runner and then getting into the shoe geeks. And we were, it was, it was really an interesting time because there was a lot of stuff going on and um, with product back then, you know, they were really starting to develop new technology with product and thinking about the gait and how the foot works in the running shoe. Um, so there was a lot of things happening and it was easy to jump into that and get geeky. Right. Um, mm -hmm. You know, one thing led to another, of course, and I realized pretty quick that I wasn't going to get much faster from where, where I peaked out at, you know, I was never a sub three hour guy, you know, I, I, I dabble in the low threes maybe, but um, it was, uh, I started looking at other things and trail was just getting started and I started running a lot of trail around here and that mm -hmm. evolved into uh, the trail running scene and the ultra running scene. So by the, the you know, early to mid 2000s into 2010 or so, I was digging into that pretty deep, um, and it, and it just became a focal point of my life. You know, I was just running all the time and logging a ton of miles and doing them everywhere. You know, we were running trail and, and mountain stuff. And then we were still going out to the beach mm -hmm. and running the boardwalks out here and running you know, the river trail and, and running uh, you know, the, the preserves and stuff. And there was a lot of things going on. And it was, it, I was lucky enough to be living. And like I said, I'm still living right around there. Um, right. To where there's tons of people running there. You know, we got three high schools really close to us. Cal Coast is a group that trains there. So it was easy to jump into that, that whole, um, community you know as well as as being a, a big part of, uh, of the trail community and the, and the ultra running community very quickly as it certainly started to explode you know i feel blessed that i was um lucky enough to run in 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 the ultra scene before it really got nuts and you couldn't even get into some of the bigger races so do you um, have a do you have a favorite ultra that you've done or favorite trail race yeah i, I well you know it Again, like I said, I have run Western States and I have, my family has a spot up there in Tahoe, not far. Uh, we have some property up there, not far from the Western States Trail. So wow. that became, you know, certainly a, something that was special to me is to be able to go run on that trail mm -hmm. and to run that race. You know, unfortunately, it exploded. Now getting back into that race is a little bit <laughs> difficult, right? Um, which is a whole other story. We don't want to go down that rabbit hole. But 
so states is certainly an important race for me. Uh, yeah. You know, I ran San Diego, the hundred down there a couple times. That was, that was a great race. Um, locally, you know, we had a lot of stuff going on in the Santa Ana mountains, you know, the San Juan trail, uh, 50 K and Baz Holly, who was one of the original race directors out here and Steve Harvey. Um, they were a couple guys that really were some of the early influences for me uh, in mm -hmm. running trail. And I remember they were, you know, of course, Western States guys also. Scotty Mills is another guy who's mm -hmm. a San Diego race director who's a, who's a, a, a great guy and uh, certainly influential in, in talking to me and, 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 you know, me doing his races. So all this stuff here in Southern California is, is, is certainly special to me because we had a great time doing it in, in the early 2000s. And it continued and, and the stuff exploded and the trail scene now is just, it, it's vast. It's, you know, it yeah. really is. And, and it's great. You know, it just gets people out there doing their thing, you know. Um, it, this year, I think it was this year, the, um, what a year to start a new race. But uh, the, I think the Midwest States uh, 100 yeah. started this year. And, uh -huh. um, and, and I think that it, it looks like a pretty neat event too over here that, uh, hopefully we'll, we'll continue to grow as well, but yeah, I saw that. I saw that they, they were putting some together. I haven't had yeah. the opportunity to go back there and run. And I always wanted the traveler <laughs> and saw was something uh, uh, that I was, that mm. Mike Rush is a guy who runs a, a specialty store out in uh, Bentonville, Arkansas. And uh, I have friends with him and we always talked about going back and doing that. And then I knew, uh, the Hennepin hundred, which is kind of more of a flat race down a, a long trail, um, uh, Michelle Hartwig is the, the race director there. And I know her. She always is trying to get me to go back there and run something. So I'd like right. to go, so the bucket list is just massive. You know what I mean? Yeah. So many things you want to do. It's just not enough time. Yeah. Totally. There's so, so much good. shout out to Southern California where both Phil and I are. So I know exactly what he's talking about. There is, yeah. people may not know this, but there is a huge ultra scene down here. People just associate Southern California with traffic. I promise there's actually some nice things down here. Um, Calco is a great group. Snail's Pace is a is a wonderful running store. Um, there's got some great fleet feats around here as well, and just there's a lot of great places to go run. And the weather is usually pretty good, so <laughs> yeah. it's a great place to get into running. So I mean, it's not not negative ten in the winter when you wake up to go running before work. No, so no you guys are dealing with complaining when it gets down below sixty. You know, yeah. <laughs> I've lost all cold tile. It's like 50 degrees in the morning. I'm like, I'm freezing my butt off. Like, ugh. oh, geez, I've lost it. Yeah. It's all relative. It's yeah. All yeah, there, relative. there is a great strong scene down here. And, and really some of the stuff that, uh, that got going in the altar scene was really kind of started here. You know, we still have Angeles crest was one of the original hundred mile races. Um, and then there's some just great, you know, some great guys coming out. I don't think people realize that we can go to 11,000 feet pretty quick from the coast here. Yep. You know, so in, you know, I live close to the beach and in 50 minutes I could be, you know, heading up to 11,000 and we got some vert and, and some, and some great trails. So it's, yeah. So how did you, how and when did you get involved with 361 yeah. and what's kind of your role now? Yeah. So, uh, that, that's an extension of the story into, in, into in running. So into the trail scene, cause, um, ASICS America, which is here, um, you know, there's some guys there that, that were in, in development also, uh, some close friends now, but uh, a guy named Pat Perry was, was a gentleman, uh, who had heard about me running and had a little bit of a history um, with endurance uh, athletics. He was one of the, the original guys going out there running the Ironman back in the mid eighties. And, uh, and he also had a, a trail, you know, an, an ultra, you know, trail history too. So he'd heard about me and, and came up and talked to me when I was down in Laguna beach and, uh, and we got to chatting and he, he, I know Matt, you know him and, and he's a, he's a super, he's a great guy and he's a wealth of knowledge and, he, and he's a super shoe geek. So, we just got to chatting about stuff and he was, you know, working with ASICs and doing some things with them. And uh, he introduced me to Jim Monahan, who at the time was the vice president of footwear for ASICs. And they kind of reached out to me about uh, running in some shoes. And, and I ran in a lot of their stuff and, and was testing their stuff and uh, started working with some of their development people. Um, and, and, and the conversation just got started then. And I, I dare to say when that was, but uh, uh, maybe late 2010, somewhere early before that, maybe, I don't know. But um yeah, you know, and the conversation just opened up, and then I started really understanding what was happening with the shoe industry and manufacturing and things like that. And and I'd never been a brand specific guy. I love to run in all sorts of stuff, you know, and test out new things and, and see what was going on. And like we were saying, footwear was really evolving, um, starting to evolve, but evolving pretty quickly as well as trail. There wasn't a lot of trail stuff going on, um, and Asics was very interested in that um, and how they were going to pursue new trail stuff. So I tested a bunch of stuff, man. I, I ran in some, some pretty cool stuff back then, uh, 2010, 11, 12, even, um, you know, 13. There were some pretty cool things being made. Um, not a lot of the 
maybe not all of it got to production, but we, we ran some really fun stuff. So that's mm -hmm. when the conversation started and, and my relationship with the ASICs guys and like they were local. So, um, so I did a lot of work with them and, 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 and just those kind of things. And then, um, 2014, probably I was actually in between things and I was up in Tahoe training and running and my phone rang and it was Pat Perry. And he had, told me about this 361 thing that Jim had had conversations with them about it. And there was another gentleman named Otto Lynn, who was a developer um, and manufacturer and kind of a chemist that we call him the mad chemist. And uh, he had said they were going to put something together with 361 and they had a line of shoes and I should get back down here and, and take a look at this stuff and see what's going on. Mm. And of course I, I was intrigued and I thought like, ah, that sounds fun. Let's go take a look. So I, I came back down here and uh, down here in Southern California and um, saw a bunch of shoes and, and I saw some technology and I saw some things and it was very, very intriguing and it was interesting. And, and those guys are all very, very smart um, guys when it comes down to footwear and building things. And Otto, <laughs> um, he had some interesting ideas. Some, uh oh, sorry. Got a little light issue here. <laughs> there's, a, there's a motion sensor. So I started fucking <laughs> shoes to the side of the room to keep that light going. By the end of the day, there'll be a big awesome. pile of shoes over there. Um, That's awesome. But uh, so, so I, I started looking at the line and we, you know, quick foam was the first really technical, technical feature of the shoes in a new foam development. And this was before, you know, foam really had exploded, you know, and really people started doing different things. Everybody's just using EVA time, you know, so to think about taking an EVA and infusing it with some rubber and then, you know, wrapping it in a PU coat, you know, it, that was new. That was, that was some new technology that nobody else was really doing. So I was intrigued and um and i hung around for a while and and uh i wasn't really even really working for them i was just kind of loitering <laughs> you know for the first as they were really trying to put the business together you know they didn't really have they were we were they were still talking to reps and still just showing the stuff and finally you know jim and, and pat sat down with me and, and they, we all agreed that that i should get on board as uh you know in product and, and talking about product mm -hmm. and, and understanding what the marketplace was doing um and what have you and that was uh you know that was the beginning of everything with 361. And that's really when we all were kind of getting together and, and, and mm. trying to understand if, um, sorry guys, I got somebody else coming in upstairs. No problem. Okay. I got my samples actually showing up. That's nice. It's always fun. Exciting <laughs> day when samples show up at the office. Oh, sweet. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So, um, so that's when all got started. That's where we we're putting the team together, you know, um, and, and, and from there it's kind of been off of the races, you know, the mm. first few years were, were, very adventuresome and we were trying to do a lot of stuff. There was a lot of footwear being built, um, you know, to get into the exact story was the, you know, the first year we had one shoe that uh, mm. was the sensation, the original sensation. It was surrounded by a bunch of other stuff, but what I felt was the only shoe that was really uh, applicable to the run specialty channel was the, the original sensation. You know, we shopped it around and, and it featured the quick foam technology and we shopped it around and, and it, we got some, you know, some early adopters and people were interested in trying it. And it was enough to convince us that we could probably move forward with that idea. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and the next year we built a ton of shoes and we had all these, you know, you know, different ways to use the quick foam and, and how we thought it would work best. And, and then we found out what, what did, we thought did work best and we whittled it down to, you know, some four models. Um, and then slowly built off of those, you know. Yeah, that's maybe a good segue to kind of work into, you know, we if doctors are running, we've tested a, good, a myriad of the shoes that you guys have put out in the last three or so years. Mm -hmm. um, what would you guys say are kind of your your staple product um, and kind of, I don't know if, if you guys categorize them a certain way. Um, could you just kind of flow us through those? Yeah. So, and the way it works is, like I said, we started with one shoe, the Sensation, <laughs> and that that fit the mild stability category for us, which, you know, was pretty all encompassing. Cause if you're a neutral runner, you can still run in it. You know, I'm a neutral runner. I, I like to run in, in that a little bit of mild stability. Cause if you get lazy, it kind of reminds you to get up, but um, started there and then, and then built a neutral shoe that was kind of a complement to that um, at that high mileage category and then built up to the premiums, you know, to a, to a premium cushioning shoe and then a premium stable shoe, um, which had some more features and things like that. Um, and that was the core, you know, we were looking to try and build four shoes that fit that core uh, of the marketplace, you know, and yeah. then after that, you can dabble around on the outskirts, right? You can build, you know, a, a, a fun, more flexible, neutral shoe. You know, you can, you can build something like, you know, nowadays we're all trying to build carbon stuff, right? Which is all fringe stuff, but it's exciting. And, and, and right. you know, 
my whenever I try and sell this to the bosses to get the money to do this stuff, it's like, hey, it's a marketing thing. We're gonna we're gonna get some hype going out there, you know. And and that's what it is because it's exciting and it's fun and people want to look at that kind of stuff. But the core stable of shoes is those four, you know, neutral high mileage trainer, you know, mile stability high mileage trainer, premium neutral cushioning, and then premium stability. And that's I think so what kind of focus on those because those are you know ninety percent of the market. That's what ninety percent of the runners out there run. You know, like I said, if I sit on my patio and I look down at the trail and I do this and I get in trouble for it, then I just geek out on people's shoes that are running by. You know, they're all right. running in that kind of stuff. You yeah. Know? When you talk about the market, you know, Hoka was probably the first one to really kind of disrupt that model. Um, mm -hmm. But they had a whole different build, you know, and with what they were doing, you know. Because you guys. Into what we're doing now. And, you know, we talk about it was exciting when I first jumped on board. But, man, how exciting is it now over the last two years? When, dude, we got all this new foam, we got all this new geometry, we got just all new such crazy stuff. So um, it's been a in your core, life. in your core four, you kind of have you know the Meraki is kind of your. Or, I say, hopefully, if I say all these right, Meraki would be your kind of like high mileage neutral trainer. Your premium trainer is the Spire. Mm -hmm. You have your mild stability and your sensation, and then the Strata is Strata kind is of that the, yeah. Strata. Yeah, is your uh, premium. So you kind of have those core four. Yeah. Um, what what are you guys playing around with? You said the plan, and I, I mean we tested other ones. You guys have trail shoes, you know. The we have the Taroko here. This is the two, um, which we haven't reviewed this one uh, on video yet. But th the updates that you made from one to two checked a ton of boxes. Um, yeah. And I had a and I had a question for you about this. But you, you lengthened the tongue, think th thickened it up. The upper is I, I'm not a. This is a personal preference. I don't love waterproof um trail shoes um i don't want them to lock in the water or whatever but this this thing does a great job of wicking water away and not absorbing and holding it which i've just found awesome um did you guys change the foam compound underneath the quick foam for version two or is all the same it's all the it's, same yeah the same okay. build is the same it's just what's funny is it's not well not funny but what's interesting is that uh you know the platform and this is something pat perry used to tell me all the time the platform, I can give you the exact same platform a bunch of different times, but if I put a different upper on it, the way the upper is weighted or the way the upper holds the foot on top of the platform, you can get a whole new running experience out of the platform, right? So the yeah. upper in itself with that new upper, um, you know, it really changes how the, the shoe rides underfoot and how the platform feels, but it's the same platform. I think they did uh, the actual outsole is a little stickier. Okay. So it's a little yeah, it's in, in the outsole. Uh, so this, it's not this one runs really well, though. Yeah. It's a nice that, nice that we've got some nice traction with that. You know, our focus <coughs> is frail, but we certainly dabble in it. And and that mm -hmm. one's actually got some really nice traction. We sell, you know, quite a few of them. You know, yeah, pretty, we're excited cool. about that. We, we'll continue down that path. I'm looking at. I we just got done with second second sample meetings for fall, so we'll have a new mm -hmm. broco actually coming out after that one also. Oh, so nice. Let me see. Matt's excited. I'm excited. You show me like like sample stuff. I always get super excited. <laughs> sample stuff. Oh, oh wow! The new Taroko. That looks slick. Wow. Yeah, it's a new upper build. It looks pretty sweet. Yeah, it does. But, you know, it, again, this is second round sample. This is the yep. one. Um, we'll tweak it still. You know, it still it goes. It'll go through two more renditions. Yeah. Before we nail it down. Well, that's nice looking. Cool. That's awesome. You saw it here first on Doctors of Running. <laughs> right. You know, we'll get to, I'll give you guys some sneak peeks, some stuff. I'm, I guess, awesome. I did, I did, we, had, we, had, we had sales meeting on Tuesday and then Wednesday night or Tuesday night, I had second round sample meetings with, you know, we all sit down as a global team. So I'm with Europe and I'm with Asia and we have mm -hmm. a South African group also. So like all of us are on the, on Zoom meeting at like, you know, one in the morning, you know what I mean? And then, and then we had color uh, merch uh, meetings at like one in the morning on, on last night. And it was like, oh. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, I got another thing on Tuesday. It's like, it just never ends, you know? So, yeah. So you, you talked about kind of the geeking outside of things, you know, like playing around with all the fun stuff. You have your core four mm -hmm. shoes there and then you're playing around. What, what kind of things are you guys playing around with right now? Cause this, I, I feel like 2020 has been this crazy year where all of these different, you know, you, you have the vapor fly coming out a couple of years ago or whatever. And then everyone's starting to, this is, this has kind of been the year where a lot of these companies have brought things to uh, fruition. Um, what are you, what are you guys playing around with? What are you having fun with? Um, so kind of the carbon world in the foam world that, you know, so when, when Nike did what they did with the P backs and then the carbon fiber and stuff like that, 
uh, it, it was great. I'm not, I think some people backed away from it initially because they didn't know if it was going to really work or it was going to take off or, or really you know, what have you. But, um, and then all of a sudden people realized at least a couple of years ago, maybe a little before that, that this was the real deal and this really did have application. And it was, you know, for your, you know, me the market was going to go after it because they were excited about even increasing their time. I always joke and say, that, you know, you're racing the guy in front of you and the guy behind you and the clock, you know what I mean? Even if you don't think you're going to top 10 in a race, you're still racing, you know what I mean? So, yeah. everybody, that. so everybody wants a little, ha a little help, you know? So, um, so the carbon fiber world and the new foam world became very applicable to the entire market. So everybody started to go after it. Um, mm -hmm. And then you had, you know, the IOC come out with some rules about you couldn't run in stuff. Um, you couldn't run in stuff unless you were selling it to the market, right? So as the Olympics were going to be last year, everybody started racing the market with shoes. Um, yeah. We started dabbling in some things, and we started doing Mr. Potato Head on some stuff to try and get our um, our athletes. So we got some Olympic people as well as some, some gold medal hopefuls that uh, mm -hmm. we wanted them to have the opportunity to run that stuff too. And it worked out well for us that the Olympics got pushed back because when that happened, we were able to pull back on everything mm. we were doing and really take a slower, more smarter approach to developing a shoe for the carbon world. Um, and, mm. and since then we've, we've done multiple testing. We've worked really closely with our athletes and I know you guys are aware we're going to release something now in March. Yeah. Release this. So this is the, um, the flame. Wow. Nice. And this is, uh, I have one more sample after this before it's production. Um, okay. Because we've been tweaking the crap out of it, right? You know, and now I've had local guys running it. I had Wesley, who I, I think Matt, you know from from yep. Run Republic, running in a second round sample. I had Dave Ames uh, from uh, he works with Believe in the Run. He's up in Long Beach. I had him running in, in a sample also early yep. on. We got some great feedback from those guys, as well as some great feedback from um, from our you know high level elite guys um, on the shoe case. So far, is is our triathlete. She ran in it. Um, we had some overseas, you know. I, 210 marathoner guys running in it so it's been put through the paces and the nice. tricks I mean, we talk about geeking out the tricks really i think me and matt talked about this a little bit we did it's not necessarily the carbon plate it's really about the foam and it's really about tuning the carbon plate to the foam you know mm -hmm. the, to go back into the history of piva um, and tpe materials you know those were developed by a company called PBAX. or they're called PBAX, but there's a, it's called a tour or something like that but then PBAX is the brand name of the material and they kind of cornered the market on it. Nike, of course, took it and then uh, sat with it for a couple of years. And then it kind of spread out to the rest of the industry, you know, but they're not the only ones playing with TPE. Um, for us, it was difficult to get our hands on PBACs because Li Ning, which is another brand in China, um, they paid big dollars for exclusive rights to it. So interesting. Yeah, that's fine if you want to do that. But we know there's other companies that are out there building TPE foams. And we think we can work with them and explore the possibilities of building something that might be even better. So the opportunity was there. We um, had the wherewithal to, to exploit it and worked with another company to build a foam that we think it performs just as well, if not better than the, the PBAX material, but also is more durable. And we think will last a little bit longer um, and put a little more life into a shoe and give it some shelf life. So you don't have to go up and reach up on the high shelf. Okay, today's the day. Oh, I'm bringing out my vapor flies or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you can actually run in the shoe and feel comfortable about running through it. You know, you, you say that I literally have a high shelf in my closet that I put my racing flies sure, on. Right, right. Awesome. I literally, it's, it's yeah. literally a high shelf yeah. that I, yeah. I go up and I have, you know, yeah. I yeah, have my so, endorphin pro up there. I have my rocket X up there. <laughs> yeah. Cause you know, you feel like you almost feel guilty about running it, but you want to run it. I mean, you know? <laughs> um, so yes. those were, those were how we really explored it. So building and, and building the shoe out, it was really about trying to find time, finding this new foam, getting the geometry correct, you know, on that shoe first and foremost. And once the geometry is correct, it's learning how to deal with the carbon and the foam. You know, we played with a lot of carbon. Um, we actually had a, a company that, we're still talking to you that we actually built some stuff on. There was a carbon material that, that flexed one way, but didn't flex the other. So it had like this really nice spring oh. to it where it actually loaded and then exploded. Um, and we did some things with that. Um, we ended up not going there because we thought it needed time still to, to develop mm -hmm. it and understand exactly how to use it. And that was a lot of feedback we got from some of our athletes, but, but those are the interesting things to do with carbon, you know, but as far as in this carbon racing world, it's really about tuning that and getting the geometry, understanding the length of the carbon fiber plate, how it fits inside of the foam, what the durometers of the foam are on both sides of the carbon to make sure that it's actually doing what it's supposed to do um, as you go through your gate. You know? Yeah. And, so, and, and I think, 
we yeah. talked about this where it, I think people are getting too focused on the bit like, oh, it's the plate or the phone, you know, it's, it's really so much more complicated about that, even for each person about going how, you know, what's, like you said, what's the length of it? What's the density of the foam? How do the two of them interact, right? How does each side of the shoe interact mm-hmm. is to- these other variables that make this really hard to do well and takes a long time to get right. And I think that you guys taking some time to do this well is going to pay off because I'm, I'm seeing a lot of things that like nobody's really hitting the mark because I don't think they rushed it. And so there's going to be a lot of like, oops, we need to redo this yeah. where you guys are so, great. So we're the bus, but I think everybody will agree that Brooks came out with the shoe initially um, with their first carbon shoe that didn't really work out and, and they rushed it. And, and I, don't know, I think they maybe have got it right now on, on the second rendition of the shoe, but, um, but the first one didn't, you know, we're not a big enough brand that we really want to go there and do something right. like that and, and, and fail. And then all of a sudden you got this tarnished thing on, Oh, we tried that. Even if it's two, three, four Brooks can do that. They're, they're big enough player in the market. Right. They have brand loyalty that'll, that'll help them there, but we right. don't want to mess around there. We want to get it right the first time and get people excited about it. You know, I think, I think you hit on another thing that's interesting. You know, you can have the same foam compound, same foam base, but you can change the density of that foam. Like you were just saying, you can play with the durometer, how, you know, how firm or stiff that, that is for, you know, throughout the the whole midsole compound below and above the foam or above the plate, which is an interesting thing that I don't know if everybody thinks about that, you know, but you you, just having a, having something called X foam doesn't mean that it's going to feel the same because you can mold it differently. It sounds like and create it different um, quite a bit. You know, that's probably, that's been part of our story um, since the get go. And that goes back to, you know, to Jim um, and Otto and Pat and their, you know, proficiency with, with, to a technical running, you know, when we first came out with something like the Meraki platform, um, EVA, quick foam, insert, you know, we're doing an Orthlight thing now. But um, they were all different durometers, and it really became, you know, how we tweak those durometers to utilize those layers. At the same time we were doing this layering stuff, everybody was kind of going to big block pieces of foam, and they were single piece out, single piece midsoles. You know, but we were going to say, hey, we can create a layering system with different durometers that does better for shock absorption as well as, you know, responsiveness and uh and durability you know so we were really playing with layers and drawers quite a bit from the get-go um mm-hmm. and, and and it's still a story for us you know on, on how we do it are you is there a new meraki coming the new down meraki. the pipeline that's the new one this is the new meraki um, i saw that i was interested yeah 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 so this is the new um this will be uh available so we have we actually have a new the meraki's are, it got a little wonky for us for a little while if you want to talk about the the style um, you know, the first one, the second one were great. And then the third one came out and we weren't initially going to do it because we had inventory and, uh, we weren't really sure if it, if it was, um, elevated enough for us to go to the, to the three from the two, you know, because the two was, it was nice and racy and, and we liked it. Um, yeah, but we ended up running out of inventory. So we brought the three in and we we're going to sell the three now for, you know, and it, it, it's, it's a great shoe and we're going to sell it for, you know, the next seven or eight months, but we're going to bring this to market in July. Because cool. We were able to build an entirely new platform with a whole new mold and then put a new upper on it. So um, in this case, you know, we, we reconstructed it, give it a little more lower profile, raise the sidewalls a little bit um, and then put a new upper on it. Uh, it's a little more plush, a little more premium. We were trying to separate. We, we almost felt that the Meraki style in itself. And if you see the two, I think you guys have seen the two. Mm-hmm. Um, it, I don't know if I have it around here, but it gets a little racier. It's a little lower profile, and it's got a really, really um, sleek upper on it, and it weighs somewhere in the mid nine. Yeah. I'm not sure, but um, but it was almost getting too racy down there. We wanted to make sure it stays up in that in that high mileage training category where it's durable, it's still comfortable for that runner that still you know wants to be you know feel a little better underfoot. And that one was getting a little bit too thin in the forefoot, um, and just a little too little too fast. You know, so, um, so for this, we raised, we put a little more foam here in the forefoot to give it a little more, uh, you know, comfort in the toe off position and then gave it a little more structure. So it's a little bit more durable. So it really sits into that space and doesn't have crossover with something like, like the Pacer, which you guys have seen. Yes. Yep. You know, yep. Like this now, which is low profile, it's sleek, it still weighs in the nines, you know, and it, it, it was just too close to that Meraki. So we needed to build something that really sat out and had its own space. That's what I was going to ask you because, you know, when we t- tested the Meraki 2, it had this kind of performance trainer f- feel to it. And right. that's kind of like you, you could you could 
go faster in the shoe. And, um, and I was like, and then when you guys sent us the Pacer ST, I'm like, oh man, these are somewhat similar. You know, you have more of a flat feel, but that, that makes sense. The direction you're going is more towards, let's get you mile, let's get you miles. Let's get you daily miles without yeah. having to be the, the premium, you know, yeah. spire. Cool. As well as, you know, when you go into that space now and you'll see it, people are doing this, you know, they're, they're doing takedowns and stuff like this for the right. tempo trainer, you know, which is something that we're going to, we'll explore next, you know, so as we build out the, the, this world, we'll go there now next and have that little category, that subcategory of speed performance trainer, you know, um, okay. as well as you're going to have, like I said, the meat of the market is still in those four core stops, you know. That was going to be one of my other questions is you're, you have the, the PIBA based kind of thing going on with the flame. Do you, are, is everything else sticking with kind of quick, quick foam moving forward? Do you, or you have the spring plus uh, foam EDA yeah. as well. Like what do you guys. So we play around with three foams, not counting this, but we play around with quick foam, which is basically our, I, I saw one of the copyrights wrote, iconic 361 technology i'm all we can say icon now wow that's <laughs> we've only been around for a few years and i'd say icon. so I, I i questioned whether i was going to let that ride but I, I might let that go but um so quick foam is a star that's the foundation of, of everything we've done from the beginning we still utilize it we're still very confident in it um and then we have quick spring which is utilized in this is a, you guys are getting a sneak peek right here this is the fierce two i'll bring you here this is a fierce two. Fierce one. Already on version two, you can see version one. Dude, yeah, they're both you know, still eighteen months out. It's crazy. This hasn't even dropped, you know. And, and I have that's first round sample of the new one, which is the same plot, just a new upper. Um, so this is quick spring, and this is a and it's a new EVA based material that we play around with the polymers and tweak it a little bit, make it a little more airy, a little more springy, a little soft. So this is going to be your daily runner, um, neutral category but just more fun, more soft, more flexible, you know, and we're super excited about this, dude. This sell it and sold in awesome. You know, we, we love it. We're excited about it. So this is quick spring. And then your Meraki is your quick foam story. So you got two foams right here. And then if you yeah. take up to the next, completely next level. Okay. We're going to show up on, on protos of Instagram. You go into Spire, which is that premium cushioning category, which incorporates both the foams. Got it. So here you have the quick foam. And then quick spring also. So it has that plush feel and soft feel of the quick spring. And then the performance uh, durability story of the quick foam. Yeah, so that's yeah. how we differentiate the category of, of the neutral categories. You know, it goes, it goes like this. Actually. Wow. You know? Yeah. And there's that's... still a light EVA that we use also. Mm -hmm. So um, this is, a, this is, we call it light EVA. And, it, and it's a, a foundation compound that we utilize underneath quick foam. So it has a nice solid base. You know, but our foams for the brand are really those two foams, quick spring, quick yep. foam. And then now we'll go into what we call quick flame, which is, will be the PIVA material. And we will explore this, but uh, the plan is to keep this in that subcategory, keep this foam. Cool. You know, okay. I just made a brief on it recently. Appropriately named, that is a sexy looking shoe. I think you guys did a great job with it that. It really does. Um, I like it. I'm pretty stoked. I'm, 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 you know, I like the design. I like how they incorporated the three into the actual design elements of the shoe. Um, yeah. This has been running, you know, this is one of my test shoes, but uh, I have this, I actually, we have another colorway coming out. So it'll come out in two colorways. There's this, which is really, you know, fast and, and, and it's got the, you know, the, the hot, hot orange color. And then I have a gray silver, um, mm. gray silver black coming out, which is kind of toned down, you know, um, I'll shoot you guys. I'll let you guys leak that color coming up cool. <laughs> sweet you guys can throw it out there into the world so what size are you i'm a 12 dude i'm not even not oh, a, man. No, man, no. <laughs> i'm not tell you what i'm gonna try i'm gonna try you know it's just being the nine is you're so stoked but uh so i don't get anything i can get you are you a nine you're <laughs> i'm a nine i'm size nine, nine. okay well yeah. I'll, I'll get you going on something as soon as we can um <laughs> you know it i, I get shoes with existing platforms. So if, if I have like a new upper coming, I can go, could you sample room, make me a shoe um, with the existing platform, but I don't get news. I don't get this, you know, I don't have a pair <laughs> of these yet, but, uh, but I'll have a pair of those. We, we're going to get those next month, you know, production yeah. stuff of, the, of the, the fierce. We'll get you guys fierce pretty quick. Sweet. Um, looking forward to test that. that, you know, cause I'm going to, that shoe's going to drop two one and I'll get production next month. And then I'm going to ship it out to, to the review guys. Sweet. We Sweet. Quite a that that looks great. Honestly, uh, 
being a size nine is like a magical thing. And I never, I never knew, you know, my, my entry into the running world was in college recreationally. That was like my intro. Cause I was like, I was the, that kid who did like all the sports all the time and um, running was never a thing. And then you get to college and you know, you weren't good at it enough at, for me, you were <laughs> Phil, but for me, I wasn't good enough at any of them to actually keep doing it. So it's like, well, what am I going to do now to like compete and be like excited and, um, running became that, that thing yeah. for me. But, um, yeah, being a size nine is fun. I've learned you over the last, you know, 12 years. Just load it up with samples. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it, depending on the company, but yeah, okay. just the, it, 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 it does make it, and you can apply for all the, you know, early on before I was before doctors of running, you know, I could apply to pretty much anywhere testing, you know, oh, right, right. thing. Cause everybody's doing that through size nine. And so it was a fun intro to kind of learning the, the world of, <coughs> of running shoes and the landscape. So yeah. When I talk to somebody that's this size nine, like I light up and I'm like, oh, okay, you want to try this, test this, check this out. You know, <laughs> size 10 over here man come on yeah you, you tell me about it you know I, I need size 12 even worse huh? i can't complain yeah uh, but uh but it's been exciting you know i, I think it just now you know so talking about you know we can go back and talk a little about next like last year like this last year has been such a struggle but that being said it did give us the opportunity to pull back a little bit and you know we us as well as a lot of the other brands you know pushed production and 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 gave us an opportunity to really pull back just a little bit, look at the line, you know, work on the small details of the line, look at, you know, at, at consumer feedback and, and really address some of those things that we might've missed when we were so busy trying to pump shoes out into the world, you know? So whereas we, uh, we didn't do as bad as we maybe anticipated when this thing started, you know, we did keep up our distribution and we did mm -hmm. sell in, of course, e-commerce, became more of a, a, a more of a conversation when we really weren't we wanted to work with the brick and mortars more um but it's also it's always a necessary evil to have it so we fell back mm -hmm. on that a little bit and that spiked for us but uh being able to pull back and really look at, at, at the collection and understand where the shoes are where they sit where they can do better um what we don't need you know to, to, to brush that stuff off and then to, to, to really consider development and innovation you know so we did take the time um to really look at those kind of things and i think for the most part it worked out better. Boom. Um, <laughs> Wait, which which did you just throw though? <laughs> I don't know. Hold on, not one of the good ones, but uh, but uh, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, I didn't even look. I just grabbed one and threw. But yeah. So so that being said, you know, it, it was mm -hmm. it was an interesting period. I I'm I'm waiting and hoping that it ends very very soon. Um, yeah. You know, it looks like it probably will. You know, coming up here pretty quick. But yeah. you make the best of what you got and, and you try to utilize your time to be productive and, and to, to, you know, evolve with, with the brand and, and with the current situation. And I think we were able to do that. So I think you're going to see, like, you know, like I said, we just had a sales meeting and I've had conversations, multiple conversations with, with the product guys and trying to, you know, give them feedback on the stuff. And I mean, our lineup looks spectacular coming into next year. You know, we got the fierce coming. We also have, we'll have a new, uh, the new trail shoe. You guys saw the one. So you'll see the Taroko. Whoa. Um, a new Taroko coming. The old one, you know, I, you guys saw that, the orange one? Oh. Yeah, that, that didn't really work out the way we wanted it to. Um, so we rebuilt it and uh, you re uh, Are you thinking Taroko or what is it? Which Sorry, one is that one? I say Taroko. Yeah. So this is the yep. new usual. That was the orange one. So um, this will be dropping in February also. So we nice. got beers. And then we got uh, this dropping also. Um, we have the new, the Meraki 3 coming in to fill the space for a while. Uh, the Flame coming out in March. And then the new, new Meraki coming out in July. So the first two quarters of, of the next year are really, we're really, really, really excited with some really new, cool product that we were really able to develop and, and to, to really dial in, you know, while this whole COVID craziness crap was going on, you know? Yeah. It's encouraging to hear, you know, from, from someone that who's for like you, who's in the, in the throngs of development and getting things out there into the world that, you know, even for the, for this industry as well, COVID has presented its obvious challenges, but there's been good that's come from it, even though there's obviously a ton of bad things that have come from it too. Um, but it's encouraging to hear that there's been some, you know, fruit that's come from it, even though. No one would ever wish this to come back. You got to make good on certain things. I mean, things show up that suck, you know, in life across the board. 
You know what I mean? So if you take a step back, look at the situation and then figure out ways of finding positivity in, in bad situations, you know? So I know, like I said, early on, we started talking that, you know, you try and learn from it and you take away stuff. And I know these run retailers are going to step back at the end and go, when they get back to normal, that we, Hey, well, during that COVID stuff, we learned how to, to really get after our, our customer without having to do demo runs and, and expect that to be the answer to all of our questions. You know, we learned how to work our e-commerce platforms better. We learned how to reach out better via social media. We learned how to communicate with these, these kind of situations you know, with zoom meetings and things like that. So these are all things that you learned, you know, mostly because you had to, but you might as well take away with, you know, from that and, and, and utilize those as things get back to normal. Right. You know, right. So you just got to find the positive, you know, in, 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 what, in a relatively bad situation, you know, which right. is, you know, it, it looks sucks. like you guys did that. I, the, the product that we, I'm very honored that you guys, you would share that with us because that product looks great. Yeah. I'm really impressed with that work that you guys did to go, Hey, hold on a second. Let's really take the time to do this. And that was our conversation that we had the other day uh, at run Republic is going, sometimes it really, you need to take a step back and really think about what you're doing instead of rushing a product to market. Um, Phil, can you speak at all to price points? Cause that was one of the most exciting things that I think is going to blow people out of the water. I don't know if you can talk about that. Yeah. Uh, so price points across the board, it's been a big conversation for us, even some of our other footwear and I will drop price points on two styles moving forward. Um, the Meraki is going to go down five bucks and the sensation is going to go down five bucks. I have a new sensation actually coming in October. You guys familiar with that shoe? That, that's one of my favorite lightweight trainer or light stability shoes ever. So the so, three, um, I used to do every single workout in the sensation of uh, wide of the sensation three was my favorite thing ever. You know, I'll talk to that because this might not be the sensation anymore. Um, we've had a, in, in, this is, this is new news also. <laughs> I probably shouldn't leak this. Oh, no. um, you know, the sensation three and I love the sensation. I mean, I ran on the sensation one, two, three, and it was really my shoe. The sensation four, um, it was a great shoe, same platform as the three. It worked out really well. We did some more fit. We call it the more fit system. It's a fitting system we utilize in a couple of our stability products. Um, but it really changed the dynamic of the sensation. And, and, and it became a little bit of a different shoe than the four, you know, and people were going, where's my three, you know, where, you know, it's so, so, but I'm saying, Hey man, it, it's kind of a new shoe. So now that we look at the sensation five, which will release um, a little uh, next fall, we're going to, we're going to pull it into October of 21 and it's this shoe right here and it's a complete new rebuild. So it will share. I'm trying to keep it down. So I don't show it to you too much. No, just kidding. Um, uh, it's this shoe right here and it has a complete new rebuild. It's a new upper. It's, it's, it's a new silhouette. It's new geometry. Um, and the platform is going to share the platform with the new Meraki, except it'll have a post and we played with the posting a little bit, the dual density a little bit. Um, but it's such a new shoe and we think it's going to be such a new ride. And I love it. I mean, I think it looks great. Um, we did some things wow. here uh, you know, over the metatarsals to really, as opposed mm -hmm. to, to just to widen the, um, the upper pattern, we really wanted to expand it to give your, your forefoot a little more room um, to display. So we really made a lot of changes into this shoe, whereas it still carries the same category as the sensation name. It's still a mild stability trainer. Um, it's such a different shoe that it, you might see it with a new name but it'll still fill, mm. fill that spot. But we like it so much that, uh, that we're, you know, we're excited about it and we're willing to say, you're, a, you're, a, you're our new little baby and we might give you a new mm. little baby. Wow. Cool. But it, it'll be coming to I'm market. And, and like I said, this will go down. So we're going to take those shoes at 135. We'll get back into the meet at 130. Um, mm. For no other reason than we're bigger and we're growing and we can do it now. We don't need to right. try and hold the GP dollars. Um, mm. We, we want to make sure it's relevant with the consumer. Um, but that being said, and I think more to, to Matt's question is where we're going to put this. Um, and I'm going to put this at 160 and, and I'm going to, and, and I got pushback there, of course, you know, and I got pushback from some of the other global regions. Um, and I said, I didn't really care because I'm not looking, you know, again, back to the top shelf, you know, back to what's up there on the shelf. I don't want it to sit up there, man. I want it to sit in, in somewhere in the middle. So people go out mm -hmm. and grab it and go run in it. You know, I want people to utilize the shoe. Not only that, I think the foam is going to be more durable than some of the other stuff we see out there. So I think you're going to be able to utilize this more as a tempo trainer, um, as well as a shoe, maybe for your medium runs, you know, that you don't want to blow out on. You know, I don't know mm. if it's a long run shoe because you'll probably break it down really, really quick that way. But we still want people to run in it and not back away. So at 160, um, we think that, you know, we'll make our money back on it. We'll make some change. I'm not going to try and pretend that we're not – we're trying to save the world. I'm doing such a good thing. I'm going to give it every for free, you know, but no, I'm just saying, we'll, you know, we'll still make a few dollars on it, but it'll still be a, a shoe at a price 
that's affordable for people to buy and think that they can still run in it. You know, um, right. you know, I, I think it's ridiculous to, to two fifty, you know, three hundred bucks, even two hundred bucks. Heck, man, I remember not to date myself too much, but <laughs> dude, eighty bucks was like that, that's all I was ever going to spend on a running shoe. I, I was just never going to do it, and that was at snail space, and I'm just not going to spend any more than that. And I never thought I would have to, and that wasn't that long ago. You know, that right. really wasn't. Not even that long ago, you know, we have a, a trainer would cost 80, 90, 100 bucks. Yeah. And then our, our mouth, our jaws would drop when you saw that random shoe that was like 140 or like a racing flat. I think the, the Adidas Takumi Sen was one of those few shoes that was like $160. And I was like, oh my gosh, there's no way I'm going to buy that. But it's like, why? And then now you have stuff that's almost twice that. It's just, yeah. I mean, now you have 160 bucks as a category, you know what I mean? Right. Like, yeah. 160 bucks, you know? So, I mean, ASICs did a lot to push the, push the prices up with some of their tech features and they had to, they said, Hey, look, we added a new trusted system. It's five more dollars, you know? So, I mean, I remember the Kayano, uh, that shoe exploded and the Kinsey was like the Cadillac Kayano and the thing was 160, 170 bucks, whatever it was. I, it, I just think it got unrealistic. And now with the new, the new shoes being you know, 200 at a minimum all the way up to three, I just thought it was ridiculous. So when we priced it out, we, we said, hey, we'll take back a little bit and not make as much as we probably could and get it out for the runner, for the guy who wants to run in a carbon shoe and, and experience it. Um, so 160 That's bucks. awesome. Available March 15th. It's going to be uh, – this will be limited release. You know, it's going to mm -hmm. be into our, to our retail partners. Uh, it will be online, um, full sizes only. We won't have a full size run for it. Um, Sorry, David. And then <laughs> – and then we will uh, we'll, we'll expand on that moving forward into the summer, you know, but again, to the, to the point we talked about, we're not going to rush it, not going to try and just, you know, blow it out and, and put it everywhere. And, and no, I'm not doing that. You know, we're going to, we're going to slowly methodically go into this and try and do it right. You know? Yeah. yeah. But I think you, we've seen this year, you know, the price point of it's the reality of that top shelf is so real. We I've, you know, plenty of people have run in the endorphin speed, for their training all the time. It's a $160 shoe. People are willing to run in a shoe that costs that much, you know, but it, there is something about that $200 mark where it's almost like, I, I, it, you your new car that you, you don't want to eat in your, on your new couch or your new car. You know, you just like, yeah. you can't, you can't do anything to it, but, analogy, right? yeah. but, but you got to find that, that sweet spot where it's like, no, this shoe, yes, it's going to be able to race it sounds like it's going to be able to race for you in the marathon. It's performed with some of your top level athletes already. And you also can take it out and get some good workouts in and get your actual money's worth instead of it yeah. just sitting on a shelf. So right. and that's, what we're that's exciting. And moving forward, as we start to explore things, you know, you mentioned the endorphin speed, um, you know, we'll go there. We'll try and build something also, but I'm not going to go again, not at 160 bucks. You know, if we take a takedown would be 130, 140. So the next, you know, the next at this game right here the next thing we'd do would be to take it down a little bit still utilize the foam materials um think about maybe you know i don't know they're using a nylon plate or something we've used ess in the past i mean we, we put an ess plate in this um, yeah you know, back in the day so a lot of things you know we were doing you know we did carbon fiber in our original meraki you know so i was gonna say like carbon fiber stuff 361 was doing a long time before anybody else was yeah, in the it's not new, so. you know but now that you know to really think about innovation and and what you're going to do with carbon fiber um so the takedown thing so first of all yeah we'll do a takedown of this and, but i'd price it at 130 140 and we'll we'll structure it somehow and, and put a new upper on it and really make it a trainer um but the carbon fiber story, and, and what's interesting in Jim, it would be a great guy to talk about this because his ideas about carbon fiber were, were extremely new, um, was how to utilize it for stabilization purposes as opposed to just speed purposes. You yes. Know, you build some kind of carbon fiber that helps support uh, somebody who pronates in a different way. You know, is there some kind of way you can build it into a geometric shape that supports the runner through gait to, you know, alleviate, you know, being tired and things like that, you know, so... From a marketability standpoint, because the, these shoes, the flame, the flame's great. And I think you guys are going to break that market where it's like some of these shoes people only use for specific things and they sit on that top shelf. If you can get it out to where it's like, hey, people are using them more, you're going to be able to sell more because people are going to go through them. They're going to enjoy them. I think the, the, the secret right now is the current trajectory of the literature on carbon fiber has moved away from performance. It's going, yeah, we kind of know that there's more complicated stuff that other people are going to work on. It's going, how do we stabilize the foot? As this big question right now going, how do you do stability? As we're finding out 
Hosts don't necessarily do what we thought. All these other a heel cup does a heel counter doesn't do, do what we thought. How can we influence the gate cycle without overdoing it? And I think that's that's where the literature is going. I've seen some very interesting things at some conferences and some people talking yeah. and trying not to share too much because I don't want anybody to steal their ideas. But stability, I think, is that next realm where we're going to probably you guys are on the on the right track with. Yeah, stability. the hurdle is really going to be how to tune the carbon fiber into all of our different feet. You know what I mean? We all, we're all so different and, and our body and how we weight ourselves are so different, you know, to try and generalize some kind of carbon fiber structure to stabilize a foot is going to be the trick that right. when somebody breaks that and figures out how to do that, that that'll really revolutionize that whole channel. How do you create, mm-hmm. if you're going to use a plate, how do you allow it to respond to different levels of forces and still do yeah. something similar going, you know, Hey, if somebody, moves in a certain way can it still give them the nudge without overdoing it and if they do it more when they're fatigued can they do that same nudge with again without too much pushback where it becomes more natural that's the challenge so it changes as we run right you know so that's yep. that's the hurdle that's why when we were exploring carbon fiber initially and we're still working with them like i said the carbon fiber that flexes is is a little more intriguing a little more interesting to us that it was more of a weave carbon fiber it would bend certain ways, but not bend the other when it tried to retract. So I'm um, trying to understand how to utilize that. And to, you know, that's, that, that could be the next, which sounds like, you know, Matt, you're, you're looking into it quite a bit too and, and hearing about it out there in that, in that world. Um, you know, so that, that's where we play, right? That's, and that's the next big, God, it just, it doesn't seem to end. You know, like I said, footwear has just exploded from just the days when I was running on a piece of EVA with the, with an upper, you know, it's just, it's right. Just, <laughs> that's where my research is heading. What I'm trying to figure out is how do I find the support from a company or the funding to be able to do something like that and actually look at it. And then how do I measure that? It's, 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 it's amazing it's, the uh, capabilities nowadays because we, because we have access to that. You know, the internet has opened up access to just about everything. The guys over to Trey who are doing some really cool stuff. Um, and it's, it's super simplistic, but it's super interesting that they have the availability to do it. You know, yeah. and the wherewithal, I know it's a lot of work, but I mean, they're putting stuff in the market that, cheap stuff but price point right you know it's, it's it's cheap by price point but it doesn't you know it's not necessarily a cheap shoe but they're they're, they're figuring out new ways to, to distribute and new ways to build stuff and yeah, that's fascinating yeah, that's it. yeah. totally we always like to see awesome. that kind of stuff in the market yeah well this has been a lot of fun phil do you have before we wrap up here anything any last things you want to share or say ask us whatever uh, we have to edit no, out I, of here <laughs> what, we don't get in trouble <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll be fine. Um, you know, we appreciate what you guys do. I, I mean, I think it's important to have guys like you guys out there doing this kind of stuff with the knowledge that you have, um, you know, because the consumer wants to know, you know, and there's so many people and God, the feedback that I get. And, you know, I, I look at the customer service stuff and I look at the, you know, the emails that come into us. Um, people have questions, you know, people want to know. And, and nowadays, especially with the COVID and we say we have so many new runners on board because almost they were forced to be on board. You know, we want to keep them doing that. We want to keep them running because it keeps them healthy. And in the long run, sure, I want to sell shoes, but I love it. I get stoked when I see people out there being active. You know what I mean? I, I, you know, somebody sees some guy who might be heavy set or looks like he hasn't been doing it for a long time, you know, hobbling along the trail. I get excited about that. You know, I get excited to see, see somebody out there trying. You know, I, 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 I'd like to keep them doing that. So guys like you that are out there doing it and having the conversation um, and, and providing these kind of platforms for people to listen and learn about it, and get people excited, I think is awesome. And, and I'm stoked that you guys are doing it. Um, yeah. you, know, that, you know, that being said, I want to continue doing what we're doing too. I, I think that the market deserves to have a, a lot of shoes on the wall because we have a lot of different people with a lot of different feet that want a lot of different running experiences. So we'll continue right. to be that guy. We'll keep trying to punch above our weight and, and, and do what we can. You know, um, you know, that being said, I, I always say go out, shop local, you know, work with your run specialty stores. It was the clubhouse when I was a kid, you know, you know, God bless Nail Space and, and, and Eddie and, and those guys. Um, they're good people. Everybody has a local retailer and a local run stop. You know, go out there and say hi and, and see what they're doing. Hopefully we'll yeah. be doing racing again next year and then running again. Let's go. You know, I, I signed up for a couple of races in the spring, so I hopefully we'll, we'll be able to do those and, and, uh, and get back after it. You know? Fantastic. So what kind of what kind of races are you signing up for? So I'm in. Uh, I signed up. You know, you know, you always do this. Like you're so out of shape. Like I'm just gonna sign up for something. To get me in shape. You know. So I got two <laughs> get in shape races. I uh, the PC the PCT 50 in San Diego. Um, that's a rollover from last year. Hmm. And then I signed up for the Canyons 100K. Uh, it, just because it's a race that I've wanted to do, and it runs in and out of the Canyons from the Western State Trail. Um, and that's an iconic area, and, and, I, and I love it, and, and I just signed up to because, again, 
certainly couldn't do it tomorrow, but hopefully in five months I'll be okay. You know, be fine. And that and also, uh, you know, I know that they're running Surf City or they're saying they're gonna. Oh. So I'll probably at least go run the half at Surf City if they do it. If not, oh. maybe we'll do a virtual or something like that. You guys doing a virtual turkey trot? I am. Yeah. Right. I have to figure that out. I might just make my own co- my own course. Yeah. Our Stevens Point, uh, every year the turkey trot here. So, I mean, I live in a small town, 30,000 people <coughs> ish. Um, and the next town is a half hour. The next town's like a half hour away. So it's, you know, it's, it's isolated thing and then spread out. But, uh, every year the turkey trot is a free event. Uh, they just ask you to, to bring, uh, food donations for the food banks and stuff. So they're doing that again this year. And this year it's like a week long challenge where you can register your run club. And we got, a, this is a huge running community actually, um, are like the high, from the high school team up, um, they've won a ton of state championships in the last 20 years right. and then, um, in, in the top division in the state. And then, uh, you know, like guys like Chris Selinski are from ran at point and, you know, some other, um, good runners. But anyway, so we got, it's like a mini week long competition to log some miles. So if you want to be an honorary point forward, I work at point forward in physical therapy. If you want to be an honorary point forward, uh, run club participant, you can log on. Maybe I'll link okay. it underneath. <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs> so right on. Cool. Yeah. But awesome. Thank you again, Phil, for joining us today and giving us a ton of uh, sneak peeks to the future, kind of your processing and, and developing this stuff. Um, hopefully a lot of people learn a lot more about 361, what you guys are up to. Um, we'll be putting out reviews for the Taroko. We have a we have one review off the Taroko 2 already. We'll be having uh, adding on as we go. Um, so keep an eye out for those. And as these new shoes come out, we'll be covering them. And um, You guys will get fierce next. Awesome. <laughs> Cool. So we'll get stuff out there and you can follow. Thank you again. Thanks, you guys.